And here we go. All right, so the first thing that we see is that some of you are trying to figure out how to get into CJ. Um, so here I am, I am in CJ. And all right, so I need to make sure everybody's muted. Um, so when you come to CJ, All right. All right, so when you come to CJ, you're going to come to your dashboard. Um, sometimes if you haven't finished everything, when you log in, it will have information up here that says you need to complete your profile. Um, and your profile is going to be a brief description of what your site will entail. It will ask you what you're going to market in, what your venue is going to be. Um, most of us put either um, clothing line, health, health, um, health and welfare, beauty products. Um, it, ge it gives you the option to have one main one and then you can add other options once you get in there, but you want to have at least one main one um, and it'll be one that um, they're going to pick up on. Those will be the ones that you'll, um, even though you'll have access to their whole site, they still want you to be concentrated on one, but because of the way we market, we won't do that, but because of the way they've set up, that's what you have to do. Um, you have to set that up. The other thing that you wanna be aware of is in CJ, and with all the affiliates, you got to remember that this is a home-based business. You don't have to do an LLC, you don't have to do an INC, any of that to exceed, um, to distinguish yourself as a business. You are a home-based business. Therefore, in the tax information, you will use your name as the name of your company. It will all be, all be just like it is for your personal taxes. Whatever you use for personal taxes as your name, that will be your name. You will put your social security in there number, unless you do have an EIN, uh, EIN PIN number, you can put that in there, but I would suggest you use your social security number just to keep everything consistent. Um, it will ask you for your um, web name of your website. You want to give them your actual website name. You don't give them your website address. You give them whatever name you named your website. And then it will ask you for your web address. And that's where you will come up with just your basic, like mine's 5e95.com. So you will give them your basic web address name. You don't give them an individual page. You give them the basic web name. That way they can come in and look at your whole page, which is what they will do. Um, you don't want them to come in and look at a specific page, especially if it's a vendor that is looking at your system and you send them to health and fitness and they're a beauty cosmetic place. Um, so you want to make sure that you give them your, um, your website address, just your basic address. Um, some of them will ask you, um, if you're fairly new, they'll ask you what your um, visit rate is. Since you are new, if you are six months or less using this, you always want to give the lowest number. You do not want to um, be zero because you will get denied by a lot of affiliates. You always want to give the lowest number. Um, if you have been on Facebook and you advertise on Facebook, then you can use your friends listings as a good general overview of how many people is going to be seeing your site. Um, so that could be a good um, indicator you can when you go in there um, if they say if you have like you know 1200 friends on your site or 1200 people that have access to your website um, or to your Facebook or social media then you can use that as a number of visitors that would potentially come to your site in any given day and that number will increase as your site builds up um, and becomes familiar with different places um, <laughs> so that's basically um, how you want to go into CJ. Now the other thing with CJ is when you come to CJ, um, I have a list you want to get with your instructor that I've given out of different um, advertisers that you should get immediate approval for um, so that you don't have to sit around and not complete your pages because you don't have access to what's in there. Um, you should get immediate approval for the ones that I have on that list and I'm always searching because they're always adding um, new people in there or new vendors. Um, so I check this about once a month to see if there's any new ones. Usually you will see any new um, affiliates that signed up with CJ will be over here. So once you look here, you can see, you know, that Goodyear Tires, a new one that just come in. Um, so 
Trade Line Supply. So all these are new companies that have come in to CJ, um, you know, either in the last week, last few days, but they're all new companies. So you can always go in and look to see what's new, what's come in and try to get um, approval for. A lot of them will say, um, you know, this company deserves, you know, has the right to, you know, access your um, site and they'll get back with you. Um, most of the times you will get an email either saying that they've denied you, which usually if they deny you, they'll deny you immediately. Um, if they've approved you, you'll get an email. Some of them won't send you an email, but you will see right here where it says re review pending offers approvals. If you click on that, sometimes they'll come here in CJ and they want you to view their terms here in CJ. And once you click that you accept their terms, then you will get that email. So here's some of the ones um, that I already am affiliated with. They just change their terms. Um, like this one right here, it used to be six and a half percent. They just upped their commissions to 8%. So I had to accept that this morning. Um, same thing with this one, Farm Fresh to You. It used to be $60. They just increased it $15. So now for every um, sale um, over $75, I get a different percentage. Um, so you always want to check those like this one. It just went up on their percentage to this one too. Um, so always check in that position when you come into CJ to see if you have any affiliates that are waiting for you to approve them. Now they do have a time limit. Usually it's 30 days. So if you don't come here and click approval, then they assume that you don't um, want to market with them and they will think you've denied them and then they will deny you access. Um, somebody just came on, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Um, all right, hold on. Okay, I got a breather, I need someone to mute please. If you're on the phone, you can star six yourself. That will mute a phone. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So, so that's how you're going to work, CJ. Now, if you want to um, get your um, come here to your advertisers, and it will pull up all the advertisers that are in CJ. They go in alphabetical order, with number, numbers being first. Um, and then all you're going to do when you come here, um, like I said, I do have a list. So you can just click on your list um, and do a, uh, immediately for those. But you will see right here where it says join program. And if you want to know about the, um, the company, then you can just click on either their name or their link and it will give you information on the company to decide whether or not you want to join. Um, and then you would just, you know, click join. You also want to check to see where there are. Um, usually if it's USDA, that means it's United States. GBD is either um, Great Britain or Germany. I'm not, I can't remember which one. Um, but it will tell you where it's coming from. Um, and then once you click on that, it will tell you also where it's marketable. So you always want to make sure that it's marketable in the United States if you just want to be exclusive to the United States. Um, or if it's marketable to other countries, what country they're marketable to. You don't want to advertise in the United States for a, a company that's exclusive to the UK, and there's quite a few of them here in CJ. Um, so be very cautious and aware of that, so that when you are advertising for those companies that you don't advertise in the United States if they can't um, ship to the United States. Um, and then once you click on join, then they will either you know, tell you like this one, it tells you, you know, you have to go through their information. Always click here. You can't automatically click yes. They want you to go to their terms and read their terms. See what it says. You know, everything that it says about it, read through it as much as you can. They all basically say the same thing. Then you accept it. Then you hit continue and it will tell you it denies it. See, mine's been declined. I get declined every time for this one. Don't have a clue why, but I always use it as a great tool but you see that it automatically declines, it lets you know, then you can always go to the affiliate um, here and ask why you were declined and they will send you information on why you were declined. They 
don't like the fact that I have other advertisers on my site for the same thing, which um, gives you the option, you know, you don't have to accept one if you don't want to. Some of them don't like the fact that you are advertising for their competition. So, you know, that's totally up to you on how you want to handle it. Um, so that's how you go through that. Then once you get approved, you go to your links, you click your search, and this will pull up all the companies that you have been approved for. So you don't have to come here and get approval for them. This is all the companies that you have been approved for. So once it comes up, and if it keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and nothing ever comes up, then that means you haven't completed your profile. And it will tell you up here that you need to complete your profile. It will not give you access to anything until your profile is complete. So once that's done, then it will show you all your advertisers that you've been approved for. It goes, like I said, in numerical order. Um, start with alphabetical order, starting with numbers. And then you have two options on how you can search. Um, you can search with the keywords, say like you want to search for food, you want to search for clothing, health care, beauty, however you want to do it. Um, you can put in your keyword. If you know the exact name of the company you want to search for, then you can put your advertiser's company here. If you're unsure how you want to search, they do have a category menu, which I use all the time. It makes it a little bit simpler. You just come here to your category. And then here's your different categories. You can click on beauty. If you have multiple ones you want to search, you can click on however many you want to and click on those. Like with me, I want to do one for um, a vitamin. So I'm going to do, um, it might potentially be in beauty. Um, I, it might be in a department store. I know it's going to be health and wellness and maybe sports and fitness. I wanna do a vitamin nutrition, okay? And then you click search. And then what that's gonna do is gonna pull up all of my advertisers that I have listed in those areas. And then what I can do, as you can see, there's 148 pages. That don't mean there's 148 vendors, but there's 148 pages here um, based on the categories that I clicked. And so then what I can do is come through here um, and pick what I want. Like this one, weight gainer is good for people that, go in, that goes to the gym that needs to gain weight or, um, you know, different things, you know, increase muscle mass. Um, I've had quite a few people buy into this. Um, so, you know, it's a good affiliate. Then you have your spa finders, um, which is a good thing, especially now women, men love going to the spa. Um, getting relaxation. So this would be a good thing to tie in with health and fitness, well-being. Um, so then once you see what you want, um, this is one for, for my seniors uh, for 50 and over, which that includes me. Um, so once you have that, then you have your box here which tells you to get your code. So then you're going to click your box and it gives you all kinds of information down here. So you can look here, say you don't really know about the company. You can come here, click on the information. It tells you what it's for, its description. Um, it actually gives you keywords that you can use if you're not real sure, you know, if you wanna use a keyword. It actually gives you uh, keywords that they've researched that helps um, with your traffic. So you can actually use one of their keywords. Um, if you want to know about the advertiser itself, click on advertiser. And here's where it tells you where it's marketing. Um, it tells you, as you can see, it's heavily marketed in the United States, but you can also market it in Canada, the Philippines, Australia, Nigeria, and then other. Whenever it says other, you can basically do it anywhere. Um, if it's not very specific, if it does say other, then yes, you can go out there and put it in different countries. Um, usually if it has a serviceable area specific, it will put it right here. And those are the only countries, cities, or states that you can market to. So you always want to be very um, aware of this serviceable area. Um, and then here's the information on the company itself. Um, so you can read about it, tells you how you get paid, tells you the different things on it, how the company is um, formulated. So this is a good general tool that you can use. You can actually use some of this information in your um, article if you want to about the, the company itself. So then 
what you can do is just come here, get your code, and you always want to do your click URL, and then you will copy this code. And once you copy that code, then you will come to your health and fitness. Now, um, <clears throat> I have some stuff here that needs to get that needs to go. We don't use this anymore. I've already put my page in draft. So now when I click this, it goes to a dead link. Okay. Um, which means, you know, page not found. Google doesn't like dead links. It, they consider that you're doing false advertising. Um, but I've already put it in draft. And there's several ways you can get rid of that. You can do one or two things. You can actually replace it, change this information here, or the simplest way to do it, because <clears throat> I haven't really found what I want to put there yet, <clears throat> is I'm going to go into edit. I'm going to go here from classic and I want to convert it to blocks always convert to blocks and I'm going to come down here to this and I'm just going to break my link and then that way the information is there for people to read but it they, there's nothing there for them to click same thing with pure recovery I've already taken my page to draft so I just want to remove the link so people don't go there Google uh, and Google won't think that I'm trying to send people to false advertising. Um, uh, same thing with this one right here, coconut oil. We're going to get rid of that link and I'm going to do a whole health and fitness page here. Um, once I get back um, to doing my, the things that I need to do. Okay. So same thing with dream easy. I actually have a sleep aid that I'm going to put there that I got approval for earlier this week. I just got to read and research the material to make sure I get everything that I need to get. All right, so, so there we go. And then I'm just going to update that page. Now the link that I picked up, just to show you how it goes, say I don't want to put that page in there. Um, or I, I just want to make sure that I have some information in there to do. Then I could come to here and I can put that link in there. All right, and then I'm going to link. I'm going to type in, paste in my ad I just got. I'm going to go here to my three dots. I'm going to open in a new tab. I'm going to click apply. And then usually what I do is I automatically hit my update. Okay, and once it updates, you always want to make sure, and the way you know it's updated is it'll tell you to view page. If you don't see this after you've updated, then that means it didn't save. It's not there. So you always want to make sure that it says page updated, view page. Um, you don't want to go to your view page for the simple fact that it will overlay on this one. It doesn't open in a new tab. You, so you can go to your preview, and your preview will show up. As you can see, it opened in a new tab, which is what you want to do. Um, and then I can go here and view all my changes. So I can see, I click here, there's nothing, nothing happens, which is what I wanted. Um, I can click here, nothing happens. If I click here, then it should open up. So my Hallelujah Acres, there it goes. So it says that it didn't like Hallelujah Acres. So that means that they've changed that site or that offer is no longer valid. So then I can always come back to my CJ affiliate and find out. And usually you can look at the date. So this one was 27. So then you can just find a different one. Um, we'll do the same thing, get code. We'll click our URL. And we're going to copy, and then we can go back to our edit. We're going to break that link. Then we're going to highlight, add our link. Then let's click on this link, see if it goes to another one. So you can see it's the exact same link that was there before. 
everything's the same, but it actually showed up this time. So now I can come back here. I know that link's valid, and then I can just hit my update. Okay, so that's how you would work your CJ. Um, and then, you know, same thing, you can go for different things. If you don't really like that one, you can pick different ones. You just can go through all your pages. Um, you don't have to get the first one that you want, but if you're doing a whole health program, um, then you can go through and see how it works. Um, you always want to also look at your money. Um, like this one has US dollars, but it also has a different money. I think that's European right there. Um, not real sure, but it will tell you once you click on it where it's marketable. Um, so you always want to make sure um, your money, how it's coming into you. Um, they will always pay you based on once you fill out your affiliate information. When you fill out CJ, you always want to make sure you want to be paid in US dollars. You can either do it by PayPal um, or you can do direct deposit. Some of them do give paper checks. I wouldn't suggest paper checks because uh, they might be written on banks outside the United States. Um, and then you will have issues trying to cash it at your local bank. So either do direct deposit or PayPal. I find PayPal is really simple. Um, everybody uses it. But if you do have direct deposit, you always want to make sure that you verify with your bank that you do have currency coming in from whatever the affiliate is. It's usually going to be paid by CJ. Um, so uh, it won't be coming from individual companies. They'll notify CJ. They'll transfer the money through CJ and then CJ will pay you. Okay, so I'm going to pause the record. Your homepage acts as an entity all to itself. That's why it has different aspects to it. Um, when you are writing for your homepage, you will always use a post to put anything on your homepage. Um, and it goes in cro reverse chronological order, which means the first thing uh, or the last thing you write is the first thing that shows up. Um, if you're doing a post and it always shows up on your home page, so say you want people to visit your home page only. So that's where you will give them your direct website name. And then they can see, like I always have my thank you page first, um, letting people know, hey, this is what you're gonna find when you shop here. There's various ways you can, you know, here's one way you can get in touch with me. You know, there's my response magic, you know, to check up for updates. Um, I always say thank you. And I always link this to something that I like. Um, I let them know that there's going to be updates added. Here's what I've added recently. I got my fashion stuff. Um, I add a lot to my site. Google always likes to have at least two posts. Um, so once you come through here, see, you know, all the things I have to offer. Then I have another offer right here, add money. Well, um, the right side or the left side of the menu, which was in your widgets, this is where these ads come from that I have up here. They are on my left side. So, um, and you remember when you was asking about the text, this right here is a text widget. Um, you remember on the banners right here when you were saying text that was 15% off? Well, this is what this is. It's a text. So it just tells them what I have, 15, um, 80 percent off Cosmo D. Um, free shipments worldwide. I don't have a picture, but I have a text that explains, you know, they can come here. Here's one for my Amazon. Um, if they want to click on here, it will take them to the Amazon for this Echo Dot, but it also takes them to Amazon page. So if they click on and it's like, well, I don't really want that dot, but since I'm on Amazon, I'm a shop. As long as they don't click off that Amazon site, it's still connected to me. So they can shop their regular Amazon and it comes to me. I thought uh, the ads on the right side were for Google AdSense. It depends on where you position. My Google AdSense is right here. So even though you have it there, Google, my Google AdSense shows up here. Um, and I also have it positioned to show up inside my pages. So yes, you can have your Google AdSense there, um, but I have it on all of my pages. So if I click on any of my other pages, um, then my Google AdSense is gonna show up there too. 
So um, this is for my Google AdSense. Then I have my wine. And then I have various different other ads here. So it just depends on how you want to connect. I all, you always want to leave your second block after your search for your Google AdSense. But depending on where you've had your Google position or what your Google ads are, Google will come in and find the best place to put the ads in your site. So, but you always want to use the second text for your Google AdSense. That makes sense? Yeah, so. Yeah. So, but just remember, yeah, yeah you always want to leave the second page or the second uh, block for your Google um, and then your response magic. Uh, some people don't have response magic on their home page. That's totally up to you, however you want to do it. Um, just remember, it's your site. You want it to be aesthetically pleasing. You want it to be, you know, make, how you like it, what looks good to you. Um, but you want to make sure your relevant material is there. Um, if you have, you always want your search to be on top. That way people can come here and say, hey, what else do they have on their site? And they can search it. Um, and then you want your second text to be uh, for your Google AdSense widget and then your response magic. And then you have the option to put whatever else you want to put there. Same thing with your other pages. Um, like I said, when you come to here, if you go to your widgets, um, anything on the left shows on your home page. Anything on the right shows on your consecutive pages. Um, just remember that home page is for post only. So anytime you write a post, it's gonna go on your home page. Um, pages always you know show up in your website as an individual page what is the purpose of the post the post is is a relevant content that you are not going to change um that you want people to see all the time um a lot of people will go they will use posts for um special events they'll put a post on their website for special events like when we had our wine um special event, people put that on their home page as a post. And then once it's over, they can take that post down, put it in draft, however they want to use it. Like the Valentine's is coming up, people will write a post just for Valentine's and that will be the first thing people see instead of having thank you, it will have like some kind of Valentine's reference or holiday reference. Um, same thing with Christmas. Um, but usually a post is something relevant that you know is never gonna change, but it's relevant content that you want out there. Well, if you, you made a post for Valentine's, it would it would obviously change after the 14th yep. of February. And that's why I said some people use it to do strictly just for, you know, um, special occasions and they will take it down. And then you have some that will, um, where did that come from? So then um, you will have some people like with me, I don't change mine. I don't, I don't change my home page um, for holidays. If I want to write something for holidays, then I'll just write a page for it and advertise my page. Um, it just makes it simpler for me. So like I said, again, it just depends on your preference on how you want to have your website to look. That's always been a, a confusing part for me is I was told never, not to change the post. And when I signed up, they already had uh, three posts generated on the, on the website and I never knew what I was supposed to really do with the post. Yeah, you can, you can change your post. You can modify them. Um, like I said, I the, it comes with, um, a welcome page on your post or it said, you know, I can't even remember. Um, I changed mine. Um, cause you want to make sure that your website is unique to you. Um, you got to remember when you got your website, it was a template um, and Rory will be the first one to tell you modify everything. You want to make it unique to you. If you don't like what came on the post on the first pages, change them. That's your option. But with Google, you want to make sure that um, you have at least two. Um, the other thing you want to do is before you go changing them, you want to make sure that you know how to modify what's there. Um, and create new stuff. And then once you get comfortable with that, then yeah, play around with your site, but get your modifications and your links done first until you're comfortable with them and then start playing around with your site. Say, you know, if you don't like it, like I said, I'm a big cartoon buff. So I know that when people come here, you know, my friends, family, people that know me, they come to my website and they see Bugs Bunny, they're gonna know, hey, that's Sheila. 
um, because that's who I enjoy, you know, always have. I'm a big cartoon Bugs Bunny um, fanatic. Um, So they'll come here and they'll know it's me because this is who I am. Um, So once you get used to your modifications and you come back and you're like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I'm comfortable with it. And you don't like that website or, I mean, you don't like, you know, what's on your homepage. Yes, you have the option to change it, but you don't want to go in changing stuff until you're comfortable doing it. Does that make sense? Uh, Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, you got, yeah, but you got to remember this is your website, but you don't want to go in and do stuff until you are absolutely comfortable doing it. So yeah, go ahead and modify what's there, get your links. Um, and then, like I said, once you're comfortable doing the modification, you got your links done, you've gotten everything out of the way with your template, then come in and start making it personal. Okay, thank you. All right. Did that help any? Mm-hmm. No. When you say you get everything out of the way, uh, and you're, you're talking about getting all the links mm-hmm. put in where they belong, okay. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, because what Roy, be the, like I said, he, you were given, when you got into your system, it was a template. It was an exact copy of uh, Roy's 1F16.com or Shop at Home with Tanya. Those are exact replicas. And so you got that. Um, and so what you have to do, even though you're on Google Live, once you get your system, it's still a duplicate. It's a replica. Um, so Google's never going to move you off the back page. You will not. You will stay there. You will never get indexed properly um, because they consider it a duplicate, um, sort of like plagiarism. So that's why they say go ahead and modify. You want to get your links in there because people can still search you, um, especially if you give your website name out. Um, they can search your website, and if they start shopping on your website and you haven't modified everything, potentially you're losing sales because it can go to Rory, and you will never know because you don't have access to Rory's dashboards for his affiliate program. So you won't know if anybody shopped on your website and purchased anything if you haven't done, um, got all your links modified. So you want to make sure you, that's the first thing you do is go through and get all of your links done get everything that that needs to be done and um, I've given out actually if you're part of the evolution board um, I've posted in there um, all the pages with the links where you can get your links for every page if you don't have it let your instructor know I can give it to them um, again if they need it or if you need it and it will tell you hey this page goes to CJ this page goes to Clickbank this page goes to Brunette Um, and that way you can go through and knock them out Um, The other thing is that if you go through a page and you come across the link and you don't have access to that affiliate or you've been denied by that affiliate or you're still waiting, um, don't let that hold you up. Find an affiliate that you've already gotten approval for and put it there if it's relevant with this content. Um, You don't want to put a weight, a health and beauty product on a clothing line. Um, so, or sports with the clothing or a beauty product. So you want to make sure that if you got a beauty product and you like with Amywear, um, that's a sports clothing or clothing line for women. Um, there's several clothing lines that you can get immediate, immediate approval for. You have Fashion Mia, you can get a, a, a approval for. You have, um, uh, what's the other one? There's several different ones. I can't think of. Um, there's another F one that you can get. There's, um, I think it's Roseweed that you can get approval for in a couple of days. Um, so there's there's several different companies you can get approval for and use that same content um, in there. So just because it's not there doesn't mean, you know, just leave it. Find a company that you do have approval for. Same thing with ClickBank. ClickBank is notorious for dropping and picking up different companies without notification. Um, so, I mean, for a long time, we didn't have the, the 101 Alice in Wonderland. Um, so a lot of us dropped it, but guess what? It's back now. Um, so a lot of you can use it. When I got in, it wasn't there. They had quit using that one. Um, they had, you know, just quit associating with CJ, I mean, with ClickBank. Well, now it's back. Um, so if it's not, so what I did was I used that same material and I found a different book club and use their information for Alice in Wonderland books. So that's how you can use the material that's still there and just find different links to go with it. 
Um, there's several different companies on CJ. There's several different companies on ClickBank that market basically similar um, information or similar products. So you can use one of those with the material that's there, and then that's where your modification will come in after you get your links. I always tell my students, do all your links first. Once your links are done, then you come back and start your modifications. That way, if people shopping on your site, your links are there and you can get monetization from them. Um, if you don't do that first, then people stumble across your site or come straight to your site based on your information you've given them, either on your Facebook or word of mouth. And if your links aren't there, then you're letting Rory get some money because that's whose links are in your, your template, which is your original site. So always get your links done first. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the other thing is um, you were asking about how do you know once you have your links done? Um, how do you know that, you know, okay, my links are done. Um, how do I know it's correct? That's where your Google and um, information comes from. So when you go to your edit, So once you go to your edit page, you're gonna go down, down to the bottom and you're gonna see your Yoast information. Okay, um, I get a lot of hits off of this cigar company. It's amazing. Um, it's becoming a really good popular trend. Um, the cigar is picking back up. All right, so you see right here, I changed some stuff and my readability went down big time. And, and this is one of the reasons. Usually, see this red right here? That's your passive voice, means I got too many. It says I'm only supposed to have 10, I got 18%. I changed a couple of paragraphs, added some more stuff. I haven't went back through it. My flesh score is low. See, it's 57.5, it needs to be high. It needs to be at least 75, 80 if you can get it. And then I have a paragraph that's too long. Um, See right here, it says it contains 150 words without a subheading, um, a paragraph, one paragraph. So um, that means I need to go in and break that paragraph up. And if I want to see where that is, if I click on this little eye right here, and it should highlight that paragraph. So we're gonna go up here and see where my paragraph is. Usually I can look at it and tell it's probably that one. So let's see where it's at. If it didn't highlight it, we can come back and do it again. So it didn't highlight it. So let's go back and click it again. But I looked at it and I saw which one it was. All right, so usually when you click on that, and that's probably because I didn't change it to block. So it's not, let's do that first. All right, so, and then, and if you see this right here, a lot of this freaks some people out. That just means there's a picture there that was copied. And once my computer sets up, catches up. You can just click on the preview and it will show you your picture. Um, that's there. That just means that it came from somewhere else that they brought it in. Um, but usually for some reason it's not highlighting. That's probably my paragraph right there. My block. But you can come in here once you click on that. It might take it a couple of times. Um, and you can click on that, that light or that eye and it will show you where your information is. Um, show you the different stuff. And usually when you change, because I only have one red and I have two oranges. So if I change one of these, then more than likely I'm gonna get a green. Um, you don't have to have everything perfect. It works out if you can, but if you don't, um, you want to make sure that at least the red is gone. So if I get rid of this red, then more than likely I'm gonna have a green. So if you want to know if your page is good, 
always come down to your Yoast and you want to look to see if it has a red or if it has green. If it's green, then you're good. You don't need to change anything as far as your keyword or your focus keywords or phrases. Um, always look at your analysis if you're red and see what you need to change. Even though this is green, if I click on it, more than likely you see here, I still got some stuff that it doesn't like. Um, but because my overall is green, I got green. So if I wanted to come here and change some of this stuff, I could just to make it better. You'll see this every once in a while. You don't need to do that. What we have here is adequate, so you don't need to use that. Um, but this will just tell me like here, it doesn't like, you know, my, my SEO title, they say it's too long. That's fine with me. Um, my key phrase is not in my title, um, which is fine. I don't have any internal links. And what they mean by internal links is that I'm not going from um, an outside link, which is my cigar company, and I'm not um, bringing them back into a page that's inside my website. Um, but I could, I can actually, you know, include one of my wine pages in here. Um, and just, you know, cause I do have in here where they have the wine and food. And I just didn't put my link here for my wine page. And I can do that and that will take care of that internal link. Um, so it would just make my score that much better. Um, so that's how you can determine if your page is good. Um, also in here, if you want to go through and see um, if everything is where it needs to be, you can just click on anything that's underscored and click on your link, you know, and see if it works. And the first thing you'll notice is that it did open in a new tab, which is what I wanted it to do. So that's the one thing you always want to make sure. Um, and you can come through, you know, do the same thing with some of your other links. Just randomly pick a link and see, see right here how this is highlighted. It's telling me that this is one of my passive voice phrases that needs to change. I got too many ING words or too many um, could be's. ING usually ha has to do with passive. Um, so you want to, you know, we're outstanding. That's a passive. Um, so I could just put, you know, change my verbiage around a little bit. Here's another one, standard of quality. You know, they don't like the way that sounds. Um, so, you know, it's, it is highlighting, you know, what my passive voice should be. Those are the sentences that I need to fix. Um, you don't have to fix all of them. And usually what I'll do is I'll come through and read and say, okay, yeah, I can change that around a little bit, make that a little bit sound a little bit better. Um, uh, and, you know, just... And sometimes you can't change it. You just like the way it sounds. So I can put like here. So there, I changed that sentence. I'm gonna update it. And then we can, you know, sc scroll down. So it changed that sentence, apparently it liked it. Um, If I could type. And see, like this one says, great cigars are made of whole leaves. So I could say whole leaves make up great cigars. Um, so that'll be a different way to say the same sentence. Um, so they don't like that I used are chopped, you know, are made. 
you know, that's passive voice. So they saying I need to, I got too many of those. So, you know, this is some stuff I'm gonna have to come back and check, but it's telling me where that information is that needs to be changed. So that's why you want to click on that I. Um, and as you change it, you can always come back and check your Yoast. When you go and check your readability, see it's dropped down from 19.1 to 18.9. So you don't have to change all of them, but you wanted to get at least to the 10% if you can. Um, usually your flesh score will go up as you change this. Um, and then you'll probably notice that you'll turn green before you get all these fixed. Um, usually I can go back here and find this paragraph um, and change that paragraph, put a subheading on it. Um, a subheader to it if I can break it up um, and that usually will give me a green um, for some reason it's not showing me my paragraph even though I know it's probably right here um, or this one I bet it's this one yep um, so you know you can go through and, and do different things like that that will tell you how to go in and fix your different information um, once you get green and green, then you will be good on Google um, and they will index you. Most of the time, Google will not in index you properly if you have a red. So you want to have at least a green, um, all green, or at least a green and an orange. If you have a red, most of, more than likely, you're not going to be indexed well on Google. Okay. Does that make sense? Peter's on, because I was laughing. I have a parrot. Uh -huh. She talks incredibly <clears throat> clear like good morning and what you doing. And so I was thinking, could I sort of incorporate her and videos of her into something like this? Definitely, definitely. Perfect, that works better she's, than anything you pull off of Google. She's a hoot, I mean, she yeah. really is a hoot. <laughs> and, and especially when you're marketing your system um, for your social media, things like that, a live video, when you put that on your social media and then, um, like Priscilla was saying, you put your video out there and, and you put, hey, this is my, my pet, she's a hoot. And then you go to your comments and say, read my blog about how she interacts. And then you put your website for your page that you created. And then they can come, you got your video, they can watch it and they can come and read your blog about your parrot. And then if you've got information in there, you know, of pet care, because pet cares are growing, um, trending uh, thing right now, topic. Um, so if you've got pet cares, they can go in there and they can find, you can link it to, you know, the appropriate um, information, you know, to take care of a parrot. You can put in there on, you know, maybe get a decent bird cage, you know, what can go in the cage for them to keep them occupied. So that would be a great starter for you. You could probably do a whole series on animal care, or bird care, yeah. um, but that's things that you, you know, that you know about. So you won't even have to be thinking about how, what am I going to write about? Right about hear what you're time. saying. You can't hear me? Oh, he's okay. Somebody else. No, I, can I you, can you any, mute yourself? I don't have any. So, um, so that's what you want to do is you want to be able to, you know, write about things you like and then come back later and put your affiliate with it. That would be perfect. Okay, here again, now choosing the affiliate, we can go into any one of the, the uh, sources that we've been given, mm -hmm. uh, do a search for what that product is we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And once we find that, if there are two listings, we can go through and check to, to make sure it's first in our area, what we're looking for. But at that point, is there any one, let's say we go through and we find two of them that are the same. Uh, they, they all participate here. The, the only difference is, uh, maybe what they pay. Is that what we're looking for at that point? You can pick all of them. You do not have to pick and choose which one you want. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, so we can add more than one link. You can have more than one link. I don't um, have one page that just has one company. All of my pages, I give people an option. When it, you got to... Um, when you first saw, you know, the videos that explain how our program works, we have created an online shopping mall. So you want to give people variety. You don't want to just, you know, that's not to say that, hey, I found this one product I really like, like our wine product, you know, our wine club. All of my pages are dedicated to wine um, that I write about. But I also have wine and romance. <laughs> and I love my wine and romance page. Um, 
and like right here, um, I did um, one for Valentine's Day. And let's see, where can I find it? And it's just, you know, did I put it on here? I might have. Um, but it's talking about, you know, getting yourself ready. Did I put it under couples? I got to find out where I put it. Uh, right here, who needs romance? Okay. And it's just talking about romance in general. Um, so I got my flowers ads in here where they can go and get flowers. I have chocolates, you know, chocolate and wine. So here they can come here and they can get chocolates. They can go and, or, you know, go to my wine page if they want to get wine. They can go to my Russell Stover's. Um, say they want to go on a trip. Well, guess what? Book your trip. Find out where you go. You don't know where you want to go. Here's a video that has several different places, you know, where for romantic getaways, you know. Um, here's a company right here. You can go to Palace Resorts Hotels. Click on here, book now. You know, here's Savannah. You want to go to Savannah? You want to go to Atlanta? These are my links for them to book for that company. Book to go to Charleston. Book to go to Atlanta. Um, these are short trips, you know, one-day trips. Here's a day, you know, three-day trip. You know, maybe you want to go for a week. Um, same thing here, diamonds. I put in for Marilyn Monroe, you know, her song, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. You know, so I gave them a variety depending on what they want. You know, here's some more jewelry companies. These are all banners right here. Um, instead of finding pictures, I got banners from the company. Use those banners in your website. It's what they're there for. Um, and then just, you know, general stuff for romance, you know, just talking. Um, so, yes, use multiple information. Um, and always, right here, want a little wine? I, delete, I linked it straight to my wine page so that they can go and look about want talk about wine. And then I always try to finish it up with thank you. And then look right here. Here's a plug. Follow me on Instagram. I always tell them, find a way for them to be able to follow you for wherever you're going to be advertising, either your social media that you've created or like here is my face, um, my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram because I'm always putting stuff on Instagram. Anything new that I have, any new page I'm creating, I put it on my Facebook or my Instagram. So then you can create followers that's going to follow you so that whenever you update your page or put new stuff, they're going to see it and they'll become your best customers. Sheila, can I interrupt again? Yes. Okay. So you created this whole um, romance thing. This is all, yep. you took the pictures, you got the, you know, mm -hmm. companies. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> I guess you went and saw who had the trips and you pulled that all in from banners. I'm not sure where banners would be found. Banners come with your affiliate. So these are all affiliates that I have that came from either CJ, ClickBank, um, my wine company, because, you know, I'm part of the D direct sellers, my coffee program. So these are all affiliates that I have. And every one of these are on CJ. Okay. And so and when I say banners, this is a banner. Uh -huh. Okay. okay? Um, same thing with anything that has a picture on it. These are text. And if you click on, if you hover over the box, it tells you what it says. Shop now. It doesn't tell you what the company is or anything. I very seldom use text blocks um, for the simple fact all they have is just that text information. It doesn't, it's not very appealing. But now show me a picture. Mm -hmm. There you go. And the way you would do that is when you click your code, mm -hmm. it's your HTML code. And that's where you would um, copy this code. And when you come to your site, you would use an HTML, a custom HTML block. And you would post that in there and that's where you would get your picture. Or in this case, your banner. This is my banner. And they, they usually tell you the sizes of what size the banner is. Um, this one doesn't tell you the size of the banner, so you won't know how it's going to appear. Um, but a lot of them will tell you what the banner size is. Um, and then that way you can determine, you know, if that's what you want to look. And this is how it's going to look. This one is an elongated one. It goes across the top. Um, it's going to be fairly small. 
but it will it will be a length one. Um, then you have some banners that when you um, look at them, they will be um, vertical. Um, and you can see like this one's gonna be a square. Um, this one here is gonna be horizontal. And that's what it's gonna look like, just like that. It's gonna show that information. So you can click on the banner to see how it's gonna look. And that's what, like this one, it just says lighting. It's very small. You see the sizing, it's 120 by 60. Um, so this one's 120 by 240, but you see it's vert vertical. Um, so that's where you can get your banner. Same thing here. Um, this one's 120 by 240, um, and it's vertical. This one here is a horizontal one. Um, it's very small. Here's another one. It's horizontal, um, and it's 468 by 60, so it's long and narrow. So that would be a good one to put in the middle of a page. Um, so that's how you want to look at it, and that's where my banners came from. Um, great advertising. You don't have to worry about putting links in it. Um, the only thing about this is when you do put them in there, they do not open in a new tab. That's the only thing you can't, they haven't fixed yet. I haven't found a way to um, get through that without changing the code, and I can't talk about code. Uh, <laughs> but um, right now, that's one of the glitches about using a banner is that it clicks it straight over your, your, your website. <clears throat> but it's still great advertising. Okay. Yeah. Is that, and, and, th and like I said, I love to write. And if you have topics that you like, write about them, put them in your page. Um, and all you have to do is, um, let me go ahead and I'll, you know, uh, up here where it says new um, post, like I said, if you're going to create a new post, then you're going to always, that's always going to show up on your home page. That's just the way the program's written. If you want a page, you just create a new page. It's a blank page. It shows up blank. Um, and you just might make a title. You always want to put your title in first. Um, so once you create your title, um, it saves it. Your title saved. And then you just click after you do your title. Um, what's the new one? I want to write one. Um, I had an idea the, uh, yes, this morning. Um, what was it? I didn't write it down. Let's see. If I can get my computer to work. Can you mute yourself? Whoever has the TV on, thank you. All right, so thank you. So there's my title. So then if I want to create, then I just go here and add a block. I want to do a paragraph. And then I'll just start writing. Maybe I'm the only one, but that was very helpful. So, and so then here it is, I've started a paragraph, you know, I've started a brand new page. And so then what I can do, um, I'll come back to this, but say, all right, I got it started and I want to go ahead and put me an image in there. It's going to be about working online. Um, I'm going to go to my media library and see if I've got anything in there that I've already added about working online. So I'm going to look at my pictures that I have in here. Um, and let's do something funny. Here's something funny right here. But those are the ones you've already sort of collected and put in your mm -hmm. library, yep. not on the Google site. Nope. And okay. I actually, you know, and so here's my picture and I'm going to write a caption. Why are you still working? And question mark. So there's that. And say I want to add a, something more comical. Let's go here for my images. And I'm going to go to upload because I know there's one I want to use that is not there. And I've actually created um, a folder in my Word 
documents that's just for pictures that I've collected. And like here's one that I've used that I actually put a logo on. Um, and like I said, I love Bugs Bunny. Love him to death. It says chain to my job. And so there's that. But see, as you can see, there's my little logo. So can you add a link to mm -hmm. these? Okay. And I'm going to do just that. Okay. You see right here where it says a link? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to highlight that link and I want to link it to my wine page. So I'm going to come here and open up a different tab. Pull up my wine page. Since I'm working on this one, I don't want to close it down. So I'm going to open up a different tab for my website. And I'm going to click visit site. And once it comes up, I'm going to go and see which one of these I want to use. And I want to use the one that's going to advertise business opportunity. A lot of you will have your wine club, so you can use that one too. Your fine wines page is also a great one to use. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to link it. This is an internal link. So I'm not going to click open in a new tab. I don't want it to open in a new tab because it's still going to my website. So I'm just going to click apply. And then I'm going to sit right there. It's going to be in draft, but it's linked. So then I'm going to come back here and I'll create another paragraph and then I'll start writing. So there I have two pictures. Um, you know, and if I want to center this, I don't want it to sit to the side. Let's center it. He's centered. Same thing with him. Let's sit him over to the left. He's already there. And so there you go. Um, some people will like say, well, I want to write a picture with some text to it. Then that's where you would come in here and in your block, you would create a block and you actually have, you see all these here. Um, you could do a paragraph, an image. If you want to make a header, you can actually pull some stuff off of YouTube. Um, you can do a gallery, which allows you to pick different um, pictures, put them all together, and then you can choose, you know, if you want, want them three wide, four wide, five wide, however you want to do it. You can, like you said, you might have some personal videos, so you could upload your videos. Um, you can go here to your common blocks, um, and then your common blocks are ones that you use all the time. Um, and then you can go to... Um, right here, your layout elements. If you wanted to do media and text, then you can do a media and text, and then you could click on that. And it will allow you to, um, when you do your media and text, you can come in and put a picture and then write text with that picture, um, which is great. It, it allows you to have your words wrap around your picture. See how this one is right here? That's what it did. Um, I don't wanna do that to that one, so I'm gonna hit undo. And because I don't want to add text to this one. Um, so that's another way that you can, you know, come in and manipulate your page, make it the way you want it. You always want to make it unique. But don't think just because you have that template that you have, that that's all you, ha you have. You have the ability to create new stuff, which is what you want to do. Um, especially if you want to get Google approval, you want as much original stuff that you've created on your own as you can possibly put up there. There's no limit. Um, there's nothing that says, hey, you can only have 150 pages. There's literally no limit. The bigger your website is, the more stuff that you can get out there, the more relevant it'll be. Um, so there's no limit to what you can write. Um, just make sure that um, you know the information that you have that you came with, that came with it, you modify that and get those links in as fast as you can. And then that way, when you start creating, you don't have to come back to them unless you're going to update them or change them later. Um, you just want to make sure that they're not exact copies anymore because you want to go ahead and, you know, start creating and getting your system as um, unique as you can. Does that help? Yes, yes it does. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to save this to draft and I'll come back and work on it. Um, and that's how you can, you know, when you're creating new pages. Now, say I wanted to change my home page, which is um, right here. 
anytime, but you know, I like the way my homepage is. Um, there's really not much I want to put on there because usually um, if I want to change anything, I'll come in here and maybe update it, but I always want people to be welcome. So I always have this here. Um, you just got to remember whenever you're in there creating um, new stuff that just remember, especially if you create a post, your last thing that you write is going to be the first thing that shows up. So be very careful when you're creating posts, because if you have something here and you really like it being first and you go and create a new post, it's going to drop it down and put that last post you put as your first one. Um, so just be very cautious. Um, if you do happen to create a post by accident instead of a page, that's easy to fix. You just copy it, go put it in a page, and then just delete the one that's on the post side. Um, but, you know, always when you come to new, just remember you always want to be creating pages, and then that way it gets its own unique length. Um, but it's, and it'll be in your page, um, in your web system to be searched. Um, and that's what you will always be advertising is whatever that link is. Is that good? No, if you have images um, that had links on them before we went to WordPress five dot whatever, um, is there a way to keep those links, or is that something they're still working on? What do you mean? Um, well, uh, some of the images that we had before we went to this new version of WordPress. Um, well, maybe maybe it's not just what we had. Maybe it's if we upload an image um, now, are we able to put a link on them? Yes, mm -hmm. you sure can. Um, so let's go here. This is an image I did. We just oh. put that in there. So as you can see, when you click on your image, you have, you're um, able to put a comment in there. Mm -hmm. But if you look over here to the uh, right-hand side, this is your de your image detail. So um, you always want to go here where it says your image settings, and this is where you're going to put your keyword, and mine's going to be work from home. And image size, you always want it full size. Link to is where you're going to put your link. So you're going to go link to, and you're always going to do your custom URL, and then this is where you would put your link that you want this picture linked to and it will be whatever product you're promoting. Um, and then you would hit open in a new tab, and then that would save it. That would put your link there. So there's no save button. You just do yeah. all that and it, yeah. it just applies it? Yeah. As long, okay. this, that's the difference in the 5.02, um, mm -hmm. is that you don't have to save it, that once you put that information in there, it's done. Okay. Um, and then once you hit publish, everything's published. Now you can always go and hit save as draft. Um, if you've done a lot of work, I highly suggest you do that. Uh, that way, if you have to walk away, you know, go to the bathroom, get something to eat. Um, here lately, we've been having a lot of rainstorms here in the south. I mean, we had like 62 degree weather the other day. It's just really weird. I think it's like 50. <laughs> It's like 52 here now, but, you know, but then we'll have a flash thunderstorm, you know, and it might knock my power out. So instead of losing everything, just hit save as draft. It saves everything that you've done, but it doesn't publish it because um, it's not finished. So you always want to hit save as draft. Um, if you've done a lot of work to it, it saves all your information, but you can always come back in and continue working. Even if you have to, you know, go back and say, you know, um, shut your computer down. If you go to your all pages over here on your left side and you can go to drafts, you see where it says published, all that. If you go to drafts, then there's all the stuff that you have for draft and you just pick the one that you were working on, click your edit and it will pull up where you left off. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are still, um, in your processing of um, modifying your pages. This is also a good tool to use if you go to your all pages and go to your published only ones, because um, those are the ones that are actively on Google. And you can do it one or two ways. You can start you know, with the first one and just hit edit. 
and go from there and then just look and see, like, I know this came from um, cj.com, I mean, uh, ClickBank. Um, and just go for, you know, edit each one as you go. Um, that way you don't miss anything. If it's in capital letters like this, you know it's going to be a category page. Um, and you can just go in there and click. Most of the time you don't have to do much to that because it goes to a page in your system. You just go in and edit some of the content in there, change it around, modify it a little bit. But um, that's a good rule of thumb that I tell my students. Um, if you just go to all pages and work your way down, you won't miss anything. Um, they're all in um, a new alphabetical order. Anything that's in capitalization is going to be one of your menus or your category pages. You don't have to worry about changing links there. You just modify the wording. Um, anything that is um, small and large caps um, is going to be an individual page and just, you know, work your way down. Like this one right here, blockchain details and information. That's exactly what it is. It's just an informational page, but that doesn't mean you can't come back in here and add your stake base or your computer link to it because it's talking about Bitcoin. Um, so that's totally up to you. Um, but that's just a general rule of thumb on how you can make modifying your pages easier so that you don't miss anything is just come here and just work on your published pages um, and just keep note of where you are. Um, I try to tell my students, um, depending on your time frame, you should be able to complete all your links in a weekend if you have the time. Um, if not, then you need to come here and work on at least three to four pages a day, just changing out your links to get your system done. And then you can come in and do your modifications, um, you know, later, but get those links done. And if you find one that's easy for you to modify because you're comfortable with it, go ahead and do it while you're in there. It just saves you a little bit of time. Okay. You have any questions? I have a question about uh, the copyright. Um, mm -hmm. I like recipes and I don't have many of my own per se. Um, and with regards to copywriting, would I be able to take recipes put them on my website as long as I referenced where they came from you really on recipes you don't really have to do that because they're general to the public oh yeah um, unless they come from a specific cookbook because I mean I have cookbooks all the time that I use recipes out of um, I actually have one of my pages um, that I wrote the recipe down and it came straight from the cookbook because I use it um, so yeah, you can do that. You can put a picture in there with it after you've cooked it. Um, let's see, where is it at? So I can put it in there verbatim as I find it on the internet? And yeah. Oh. Yeah, because um, let's see, is this the one? Yeah, see, here's mine. This is what I cook, mm -hmm. um, you know, and where did I, this one I didn't put the recipe on. I can't remember which one it was I put the recipe on, but it's a recipe I use straight out of a cookbook. And that's what I put, use two of this, three of this, half a teaspoon of this, you know, um, and just put the title. I can't remember where it was at, it's in one of these. Um, but yeah, if you got a cookbook and, it, and if you've cooked it, take a picture of it and use that because they like that better than pulling pictures if you have a picture of the actual meal that you've cooked. Um, see, here's another one. Um, I think I actually just copied down, um, you know, here it was beef tips smothered in red peppers and onions with light gravy and steamed broccoli and rice. You know, this is my picture of what I cooked. Um, you know, here's the red wine that I put with it. Um, I don't drink, so I always put it in my paper. You know, this was actually some grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're funny. laughs> Good drinking. But it worked. <laughs> yeah. wow. And um, same thing. I actually have another one that I took a picture and put it on Facebook. And it was um, apple juice, you know, but it was a white, a white wine, you know, but it worked. Um, same color. Um, I do have colored glasses um, that I use sometimes in some of my pictures. Um, and, but, you know, I don't drink, but I don't say that I can't market. I market my wine based on fact. Um, I don't market my wine based on taste because I don't know what it tastes like. And I'm not going to tell somebody that I like it when I don't, don't know what it tastes like. That's to me is false advertising, but I can tell them 
what the chemical makeup of the wine is, why it tastes the way it tastes, and why some people prefer reds over white, you know. So that's where I come from, you know. When yeah, I do research um, why, why, why one wine would be better than another, um, but I don't ever talk about taste in my wines when I write about my wines because that, to me, is false advertising. Now, I might reference, you know, hey, my friend or one of my customers likes the way this tastes, um, but I always reference that it came from somebody else, not from me. So, but that's just me. But yeah, um, like you said, you know, anything personal works great. Yeah, and I think Paul Rankin actually has a, web, a, a page on his website that he calls comfort food. Um, and that's what he does is he, like he put one on the website the other day was a roast beef um, open face sandwich that he made. Um, and he put on there how he made it, took a picture of it and put it on there. Um, and it is part of his site. I'm getting ready to do a DIY site page on my site. Oh. And um, I actually put a filler out there on my Facebook. I said, calling all DIY people. I need information to fill up my web page. I said, uh, if you want to be affiliated with me, go to my web page, see if you like what you see, and see if you don't mind advertising with me. Um, and I've got five or six people send me DIY stuff they have. And they've sent me exactly, you know, instructions on how to build it. And they've sent me pictures of the finished product. So no, you know. could you repeat that again? What did you do? You you wrote to people? Um, mm -hmm. I went to, I'll actually show it to you. I went to my Facebook page okay. and I put an ad out. I wrote on my Facebook and it said um, DIY, calling all my DIY people. And let's see, here's one I did for wine. And um, let's see, where is it at? Right here. Oh. Yep. And I said, you know, I'm getting ready to start a blog site. If you need any information, send it to me. And this is some of the ideas I want, you know, and this, they've shared it with people. And then I put down here, visit my site, because I don't put my site up here. I just want them to read the information. You always come to your comments and put your site there. You know, I said, visit my site, have a look around if you'd be interested, you know, and then here's people commenting. And then I actually had people up here that shared it with people um, that liked it, didn't like it. Um, I got some emails from people that sent me stuff. Here's one of the um, ladies that sent me, um, here's one of her DIYs. She got a screen do uh, door, put a screen behind it, and she put this up inside her closet, has all her jewelry on it. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I mean, just amazing. So wow. now she don't have to dig through a jewelry box. You know, you know, here's a lady, she does baskets, you know, um, diaper. I have a friend of mine that does diaper cakes, you know, for newborns. So, you know, different things like that. And they're sending me instructions on how they did that. So I'm going to be putting that on my website. Awesome. So, but that also gets me people looking at my website. So it serves two purposes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a new site. I mean, I'm creating a new page, but I also got people coming to look at my site. So... Um, it's two, and then, you know, here's my romance for Valentine's that came off my Instagram. Um, I just had Instagram send it straight to my Facebook. And your grape juice? Yeah. No, this is actually a picture that I got, but I put my logo in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I put my logo. This is my, um, actually my new business card I created. And I just put that on there. So, um, you know, there's different ways to advertise and see, I didn't put anywhere in here. You know, I just said shop with mama chief. It doesn't have my website, but they can see all my information right here. So nice. it works out good, but yeah, you have original stuff. Yes. Use it. It works. Great. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Is somebody, <laughs> that's, that's a little distracting. <laughs> Right. Hey, Sheila. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Cindy. I love all your ideas so far, <laughs> by the way. Thank hey, you. Is there a way on your on your PBS system, <laughs> is there a way on 
on like the left side of the screen to add or remove some of those categories? Uh, yes, you can. And that's very easy. Could you mute yourself if you're not talking so I don't have to mute everybody? There's something very distracting back there. <laughs> I think somebody fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Um, so I'm just going to mute everybody. And if you want to unmute yourself, go ahead. That way we might be able to alleviate that noise. Um, so, but if you want to unmute, go ahead. Um, maybe that got rid of what we were hearing. But yeah, if you um, want to change your menu structure, that's very easy to do. Once you're on your page, you're going to go here to your menus. And this will give you your menu structure. And it has a lot of good information um, that you can use. Um, this here shows you all the pages that you've recently created. This shows you all the pages that are in your system. So the best thing that you can do is you create your page first. If you want it to be a category like arts and entertainment, then you want to make sure your title is all in caps. Okay, so then once you do that, you see your menu structure over here to the right. Um, you just click on your um, page that you created and you're gonna add it to your menu. And once you do that, it's gonna be at the very bottom of your menu structure as a new page. So if you want that as a category, then all you do, you can leave it there or you can do like it is, you put it in numerical order, um, not numerical order, alphabetical order, and just move it to where it needs to be. Once you have it set, then you're gonna hit your save menu and then that will be your new category. If you see one that you don't want anymore or you don't you know you don't need it then um, you do the same thing you can just look at it and you click this page um, click on page and it gives you the option to remove now the thing about removing a category even though you move, remove the category if it has pages linked to that category you still have to either remove those pages or put them in draft because they're still in your system. Um, so if you're just deleting a category <clears throat> because you don't like the category, but you still want the information, then that's fine. <clears throat> but if you delete a category and you also want to, to, to delete or get rid of the pages associated with it, then you have to go to your all pages and find those pages and either, I would suggest put them in draft because you can always come back and use those later. Um, I'll never get rid of stuff unless I absolutely know I'm never going to use it again or I can't use it. Um, <clears throat> but always put it in draft. That way you can always pull it back up. Once you get your system, the way, your menu structured the way you want it, you always hit save, save menu, and do not click off the page until it is set. Um, and I always try to do it twice just to make sure it saves. And then when you go back to your system um, and go back to visit your site, then your new category should be there or the ones you deleted should be removed. Is that what you were looking for? Yes, thank you so much. That was very <laughs> helpful. <laughs> appreciate it. I'm yeah. sorry, I, I missed the very be the, the beginning. It was a little fast for me. Okay. How do you get to where you start doing this? Okay. If you're on, okay, let mine finish updating. Hold on just a minute. You never want to leave it while it's updating or it won't save. And I took that in, out and put it back in. Um, when you go to visit your site, it gives you the option to go to either your dashboard. It gives you the option to either do um, go to your dashboard, go to widgets, or go to menu. And you always want to go, um, if you want to get to your menu, you go to your menus and it brings you straight to your menu structure. Um, so once you get to your menu structure, um, there it goes, it updated. Um, it gives you your menu structure, it gives you all the pages, your most recent, and then it gives you, um, if you hit view all, it gives you everything that's in your system. Um, and that's where you create your menu structure. Um, if you want to add a new category, you create the page first, and it has to be a page, not a post. 
post will not show up here, just pages. So you always wanna make sure that you've created a page. If you know that you're gonna to want to use that as a um, menu item, you wanna make sure it's in capital letters and you can create the content that you want. The good thing about creating a menu page or menu um, section is you don't have to, it doesn't have to be very long because you know you're gonna be adding to it. Um, so you just want something to get started with. And then you hit save on your page and then you come here and you click check off whatever that title was. You're gonna hit add to menu and it will show up at the very bottom of your menu structure. And then you move it to wherever you want it to appear. Make sure you indent it all the way to the uh, left hand side um, so that it will be a category. If you put it anywhere else and it's indented to the right, then it will be a subcategory. So if you want it to be a main category, you wanna make sure it appears all the way to the left hand side. When you have it where you want it, because you're just gonna drag and drop it where you want it to go, fit in, once you do that, then you hit you say, save menu and it saves your menu structure. Okay. So, um, so that's how that works if you wanna add. So if you're here on your home site and you're like, okay, I wanna add that page I just created um, as a menu, then you will come here and you see your three options, your dashboard, your widgets, or your menus. If you wanna put it in the menu, you just click on menus and it takes you to your menu structure. That's what I was looking, okay, right yep. there. Yeah. Okay. And I use this a lot, especially if you know you want a widget. Um, and like I said, widgets appear um, either on the right or left hand side. That's basically the only reason you're going to use this. And it's usually for your response magic, um, your Google AdSense, or if there's a banner or a picture that you want to add to your content side, either right or left. Um, like I said, I actually have stuff down here in my footer. Um, which that is down at the bottom. You can put, you know, your Facebook, you know, your social media stuff you can put there. Um, I actually have banners down here. These are for companies that I have down at my footer. Um, so it just depends on where you want to, you know, petition or maneuver stuff. Um, but it will, all, it shows up, this information shows up on every page at the bottom. And I usually rotate, rotate these out every once in a while just to give it a fresh look. Um, so, but the ones that are actually up here on my content left and right, I don't cut, remove those unless, um, you know, the affiliate changes or they give, you know, some, sometimes they'll send me an email and say, Hey, can you put this on your homepage? Then I'll come here and put it on because they do send me some stuff. Um, some of my companies, they want me to put it on their home, on my homepage for advertising and they will come and look to see if it's there. Um, I haven't gotten one of those in, in a while, but usually when they send me one, I'll put it on there. Okay. Okay. Now, it, it, the pay, I know we're short on time here, but the, what's the difference between the customize and the edit page? Um, I don't, customize is usually has to do with, um, you know, how you want it to look, how it appears. With this new system, you won't have to do that. The older system didn't give you a lot of options. This new system with the 5.0.2, it basically alleviates that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I probably would never mess with that at all, um, you know, because it just basically, you know, helps you with how you go about putting, you know, your identity. You know, if you want to go with your social media, this is where you would go. If you want to change the colors of your background, change your headers, um, different things like that, this is where you would go to your customization. Oh, oh, oh okay, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, because you can change your background. A lot of you, you've got, you know, just the basic, I think it's like a slate gray. So you can come here, you know, if you want to change your background image, you can, same thing, pull images off Google if you have them in there. It gives you the option to do that. It also gives you the option, you know, um, some stuff, some of the things come with, you um, things already input, you just have to put it in there. Same thing with your header images. Um, you can upload images to cycle through. Um, and then it comes with ones that are there. If you want to use those, all of these I have in there and they cycle through my system every you know few seconds, it'll change the page or change the image. Um, so that's how you can come in and make your system unique, um, you know, and 
you know, if you want to go in, like I said, and do the customization just to make this, because this will change out. Of some, you know, if I click on another page, you know, in five minutes, there'll be something else different up there. Um, same thing here, you, you know, I like this because it makes my wording stand out. Um, I have one of my students, she has um, butterflies. It's beautiful. Um, uh, one of my friends in Texas, he's my cowboy. He has cowboys on his. It's, you know, it works for him. So this is another way you can personalize your site, um, you know, but you also want to make sure that whatever you put in your background, just remember it's going to bleed through because this is still going to be transparent. But, you know, you, that's how you can customize your site. Very good. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anything else? I have a question about posts. Okay. If I wanted to create a new post, I'd go under new and then click on posts. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now that doesn't show up on the menu. No. Um, so, um, Say if I created a post either by accident or I decided I didn't want it, uh, where do I go to delete it? Same thing. You would come here to your dashboard. Okay. And just like it says pages, you have one that says post. Oh. And you can, you can go to all posts and it will show you all the posts that you have. Okay. And you can do the same thing. If you go to edit, each one of these has its own personal um, information so it still has its own personal address for you to be able to use it. Um, so this one here would be um, personal loans. Um, it would still have its own web address. So you can still post just this address here that comes with this, which is right here, Need Money Fast. Um, that would be my permalink. I can still post that and it would take them to just this on my home page. Um, but the good thing about post, you know, there's the good and the bad. The good thing about post is that they are there. You can't index them in a category. So if I wanted to put this um, under my category menu under, you know, financial or money, I can't do that because it's on a post. It has to stay there. But because it's on a post on my home page, if they click on my home page, this is going to be one of the pages that they get to read. So would it appear, I'm trying to visualize this, so if I created that as a post, would that go below my um, home post? No, if you create a new post, okay. like I said, remember posts are, are created in reverse chronological order. So that means the last thing you post is gonna be the first thing that shows up on your site. So if you go in and create a new post, Say I go in, created a new post. This is my home page. This is the first thing I want somebody to see. But if I create a new post, this is going to drop down one. And the post I just created will be the first one now. And can you change that by changing yes. the date? Yep, you sure can. So all you would have to do is when you go in um, to your post, and you look over on the side, you, you have to be in your dashboard. I mean, in your block, not block, your document. So when you go to your post, um, let's do this one. And so you have to be in your block, not your, um, not your block, but your document. So you're going to be over here at your document and you see your publish date. Mm -hmm. If you change that publish date or edit that publish date, you always want to make sure that it's a date um, before your uh, last post so that it drops it down. Okay. So if you create a post today on the 26th and the last post you created was two months ago, then you need to make sure that post is prior to that, that post you did two months ago. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, you can always change it, change the date, and that change the changes the location of your uh, post. And I that new post would show up under my post called home, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would show up on your home page um, or your menu for home page. So it would show up here if you did a post. It would always be under your home page. Okay. You won't be able to index it 
in your categories. It will always be under home unless you took it out, copied it, pasted it to a new page, then you could index it. Okay. Thank you. You're very so welcome. What, what is a post or a, and a widget? Uh, what? Uh -huh. So a post, the, go ahead. No, that's all right. I guess the widget I see is over on the right. It looks like a little block of information. Um, now a widget, okay. Widgets is just HTML code. That's all it is. And um, you have different widgets that you can use, you know, for categories, images. Um, and all it is, is it's code. Um, like this one is for my response magic. It's a text. Um, and then you can just put it there. Um, uh, put it under your text information. You save it. And then it shows up, depending on where you put it, um, it shows up either on your left or your right side, depending on where you put it. Okay. And, um, but that, you know, that's just different information that you can use. So when you go, a widget is any of this information over here, you can only put that if you have a widget. It comes through widgets. Sheila, before you end. Okay, I'm um, ready. <laughs> I, I think this has been the most helpful of, <laughs> of any instructor. So how do I always make a date to come to the same site. I know my instructor had to go and put me on a list. You, once you are, are approved for my class, you stay here until I tell them that I feel you're ready to leave. And then I'll basically graduate you and I'll let your instructor know that I feel you're finished with my class and I'll move your card off my, my board. Oh, thank you, thank you. That means I can come here every Saturday. <laughs> yes, <that's true. laughs> I may be here and forever. ask my silly questions. <laughs> yes. Um, um, I have my regulars. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of them. Am I, Miss Estelle? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, good, you know me. <laughs> this has been so great, Sheila. So